wonderful students today we will continue with our topic that is mathematical logic in last lecture we have seen group tables about uh, conjunction and disjunction and negation that is and or and not now in this lecture we will see conditional and by condition we will see conditional and by condition conditional that we only have given examples of both if you study hard then and then only you will get to the exam or you will get good marks means what is the condition that you should study hard then what you will get you will go to the exam you will get pass to the exam this is called as implication that is called as condition now we will prepare truth table for condition now everybody know how to prepare truth table for condition see p q these are the two variables which you have to take permanently p implies q it is read as how to read this p implies q now same conditions as we have taken n and n of that is t t if both are true then the resulting statement is also true this you have to learn t f here only it is false next false true true false false is also true if you study hard then you will pass if you not study it will work then this is the conditional this is the truth table for conditional now we will see for the by condition now by condition one example i give of by condition if when or suppose an angle is an equilateral if when only if it is equal what i have said an angle a triangle is an equilateral triangle if when only if it is equiangular it means both the sides the converse angle say main are true first if a triangle is equilateral but natural it is equiangular isn't it it is true Conversely, if a triangle is equiangular, equiangular means you all know x plus x plus x is equals to one eighty, x three x is equals to one eighty, x will be equal to sixty. That means each angle is sixty degree. That means it is an equilateral triangle. So both the conditions are satisfied at a time. If a triangle is a uh, sorry, a triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equiangular. It is called as by condition. Now we will prepare two tables for that. Now, what is the difference between conditional and by condition? Here, P is the conditional, Q is the result. Isn't it? That is why we are keeping the arrow only to the Q side. But here the arrow is on both side. Means if P is the condition, then the result is Q. And if Q is the condition, then the result is P. So we prepare a truth table. T T T T F F. You have to remember this F and F F T. So this is another truth table for by conditional. This is truth table for by conditional. Now same way. We have to, if you are asked to write in symbolic form, same way you have to proceed as we have done in and and or. Now, next we will see. I again say the whole chapter is dependent upon only and only the truth tables. If you know the truth tables well, then there is no difficulty in solving any of the questions. So you must be well versed with this. Okay. Now we'll see P, Q, R, and S. If there are four statements, then how do? 
The symbolic form, everybody know how to do it. Truth values, everybody know. Now we will see. see. Now, if P and Q are true statements, what is given? P and Q are given to be true statements. R and S are given to be false statements. Now you have to find a truth value of each of the following. Now comes our main part first. I will start to be some P or Q and Now see. P or Q and R. Now see. P is given to be how? It is true statement. So P or isn't it? Q. How is Q? Also true. And. But what about R? R how it is? False. Now first as self, as in every mathematical problem we solve the bracket first. Isn't it? So also we will try to simplify this bracket. What is the connective joining this two? And. You remember the proof table of and? If not, see. P, Q, T and Q. T, T is T. T, F, F. F, T, F. F, F, F is also F. This truth table. Every time it is not necessary. But still, if you are not versed with that, Every time at this present when in the starting, you have to write this truth. Okay. Now see so T and F. Where is our T and F? T and F. What is the resulting statement? False. So this is the bracket value of this truth value of bracket is false. So what do we write? T or now what? Now our and part is over. Now see which is the connective given here. Is the connective R. Now remember the truth table of R C. P Q P R Q T T T T F also T F T T F F is false. Now see our statement. P R F. Start where is C or F? T or F. What is the resulting statement? True. So our resulting statement is also true. So what is the truth value of this statement? This is called as a logical statement. What is this? This is called as a logical statement. Why it is called as a logical statement? Because it is joined by the logical connectives. It is joined by the logical connectives. That is why it is called as logical statement and C, P and Q true, R and S false. Applying the truth tables, we have got the truth value of this logical statement as T. Okay, one more sum for your understanding will take. The condition remains same, that is P, Q both true, R and S false. In writing short, P, Q true statements. R comma S false state. Okay. Now one more sum will take. Like this. P and negation R or negation Q and S. Now see. P. How is P statement? True and negation R. Isn't it? Negation R. Now how is R statement? False. But what is negation of false? True. So if it is not, then we write it like this. Negation. Q. How is Q? True. So negation of true and S. How is S? S. Now T and negation of F is true. And negation of true is false. False and 
false. First of all, the brackets T and T. We know that. Now I am not writing the truth table again. We know that in and truth table only T and T are true. Others are false. So T and T is T and F and F false. T and F I have told just now that in and table only T and T are true. Others are false. T and F. False. So our this logical statement, the truth value of this logical statement is F. Understood? Next sum we will see. Let 
Now, how the question will be? I'll just read the question. Now, see. Use quantifiers. What is the question? Use quantifiers to convert each of the following open sentences into a true statement. Is it? Now, see. X plus four. So, seven. X plus five is equal to seven. Now, this is an open statement. We have to use quantifiers. Now, there is the value of X which satisfies this condition, isn't it? Now, our question is open sentence is defined on N. What is S? Set of natural numbers. Means in a set of natural numbers, there is the value of x which we put here, then this sentence is true. 1. Or if we put value of x is equal to 1. 1 plus 5 is not equal to 7. Means it is for all natural numbers, the statement is not true. If we put here 3, then also it is not true. But it is not that it is not true for any of the values. Yes, it is true for one value that is 2. So in this case, which quantifier we will use? We will use existential or universal. What I have told universal means it should be true for all the values of n. Is it true for all the values of n? No. It is true for only few values or in this case, it is true only for one value of x. So which quantifier will you use? Existential. So how can you write this? That exists x belongs to n such that x plus 5 is equal to 7. Isn't it? There exists x belongs to n such that x plus 5 is equal to 7. Yes, it is true because n uh, 2 is a natural number. Now, we will see another thing. One more sum we will take. See. We will be given our set A. And what are the elements in that? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we have to determine the truth values of the statements. Okay, I will write the statements first. There exists x belongs to a such that x plus 3 is equal to 10 number 2. For all x belongs to a, x plus 2 is less than 9. Number 3. There exists x belongs to a such that x plus 2 is less than 5. And four, for all x belongs to a, x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 9. Now see, first pay attention to the quantifiers. First, what is the quantifier here? There exists, means it is an existential quantifier. How will you read this? There exists x belongs to a, means there is one number x belonging to A means it is not necessary that it is true for all the values of X. But what it is said that it is true for any one element of X. What is whether it is true or false? X plus 3 is equal to 10. Now we will see whether it is true or any for any value or it is not true for any value. First put 2. 2 plus 3 is equal to 10. Means it is not true for 2 also. Next, 3. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. But it is not equal to 10. Means it is not true for 3 also. 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. Means it is not true for 4 also. 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. Not true for 5 also. 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. Means this statement is not true for any of the values of A. But what it is given there exists X belongs to A. So is it true or false? False. So what is the truth value? False. 
next what is the quantifier for option means this condition should be satisfied by all the values x belongs to a x plus 2 is less than 9 we will see whether it is satisfied by all the numbers or not 2 plus 2 4 plus it is greater than 9 so it is true for 2 next 3 3 plus 2 5 less than 9 it is true for 3 also 4 4 plus 2 6 less than 9 5 5 plus 2 7 also less than 9 6 plus 2 8 less than 9. Means this condition is satisfied by all the numbers or all the elements of A and the quantifier is for all. So this is a true statement. The truth value is T. Now there exists again existential quantifier. X belongs to A such that X plus 2 is less than 5. Means if it is satisfied by any one of the value also, then also the statement is true. 2. 2 plus 2, 4. Less than 5. Means it is satisfied by 2. 3 plus 2, 5. It is not less than 5. It is not satisfied for all remaining values. But it is satisfied for any one value. And we are given there exists. Means it can be satisfied by at least one element. So this is true state. For all x belongs to A. Means for all x. This way, this condition should be satisfied by all x. See whether it is any. x plus 6 greater than or equal to 2. 2 plus 6, 8. Is it greater than or equal to 9? No. So, first element only is not satisfying this property. Means that this for all but when only any one is not satisfied means this is a false statement this is a false statement so understood the use of quantifiers now next we will see that is one more example if you want we can take one more example will take then we'll stitch on the main part. B is equal to 5, 6, 8, 10. There exists X belongs to B such that 3X plus 4 is equal to 28. And second statement is for all X belongs to B x plus 7 less than 45. Now, there exists. Means for any one it is composite. 3x plus 4 is equal to 28. Like, uh, let us see. Put 5. 5 3 is 15 plus 4, 19. It is not 28. Means it is not true for 5. Same. 6 3 is 18. 18 plus 4, 22. Again, not true for 6. 8 3 is 24 plus 4, 28. Yes, it is satisfied by 8. And what is our condition? There exists. Means it should be satisfied by any one. So, this is a true statement. For all x, means this condition, this uh, statement will be true if and only if this is satisfied by all the elements. x plus 7 less than 40 x plus put 5 5 plus 7 12 12 less than 40 it is true for 5 next we will see for 6 6 plus 7 40 yes it is also less than 40 but see what about 8 8 plus 7 15 it is not less than 40 means it is not true for this also and not true for this also but what we are given for all means this is a false statement. Isn't it? If instead of this there are two quantifiers were exchanged. Means if instead of this you write for all this. Then what was the condition? False. Because it is not satisfied for all. 
and instead of this you use this then the truth value will be changed to true because it is true for first and second elements understood so this is the point now we will switch on to our main topic that is statement patterns we we'll see statement patterns now we know what is a statement isn't it in the first exercise only we have studied what is a statement it is a declarative statement which is either true or false but not both simultaneously that is a state or the open sentences are not statement interrogative imperative so statement patterns what are the statement patterns there are three statement patterns there are three statement patterns first is tautology what is this tautology second is contradiction what is second contradiction and third is contingency what is third contingency at present just for your information i will write what is this tautology means all true contradiction means or false and contingency means mixture of true and false but what it is we'll take one example and then show now see before that we will see how to prepare truth tables if you know how to prepare truth tables then less the remaining part is very easy we will take one example implies q implies no very very important हो सकता है आपको फर्स्ट सम में यू मे फाइंड डिफिकल्टी बट वेन यू गो ऑन सॉल्विंग द सम्स यू विल फाइंड इट इजी हाउ मेनी स्टेटमेंट्स आर देयर पी एंड क्यू टू स्टेटमेंट्स आर देयर पी क्यू इज इट आल्सो वी वांट निगेशन क्यू ओके नो व्हाट वी वांट पी एंड निगेशन क्यू सो दिस आर द कॉलम्स व्हिच यू आर गोइंग टू What are these columns? P and relation Q. Next, we will prepare this. Q implies Q. Okay. And in the last column, finally, what we want to write this? P and relation Q. Double implies Q implies P. For some, you may find difficult. But as you go on doing the sums, you will find it very easy. P and Q, first two columns we are written. Next, we want negation Q for this bracket, isn't it? So we have written this P and negation Q, first bracket. Next, we want Q implies P, so we have written this. And the last, we want the whole total is uh, statement, so we have written this. Two conditions remain same as we are written in the truth tables. P P. Learn this by heart. P F F P. What does this remain same? In any sum you do, this remains same. Negation Q. Negation Q means exactly opposite of Q. Here it is. What is Q statement? True. So negation will be false. Here it is false two false. Got it. Now what is this P and negation Q? So which two columns we will consider? P and negation Q. This and this and in and column. What is that? Only P and T is true. Others are false. Remember this. Okay. P and F. false p and t just now i have told f and f false f and t false q 
implies P. Now in column of conditional, see here. P, Q, P implies Q. P, P, P. P, F, F. F, P, P. F, F, F is. Okay. Now Q implies P. Means P implies Q. Isn't it? P implies T. Two. One. F implies T. F implies T. T. Now Q implies T implies S. F. F implies S. T. Now here, it is double implication. We prepare the column of double implication. P, Q. P double implies Q. P, T is T. T, F, F. F, T, F. F, F is Now this and this. F, T. False. T, T. for this logical state. So write down this, study it well. In the next lecture, we will take more examples and logical patterns also to make it easy. Though you don't understand this sum in this lecture, but as you proceed the sums, as you do the sums, you will understand. So don't get panic that ma'am, you are not understand this. Isn't it? So write down this sum. Right, keep fruit tables in front of you, you will be finding it very, very easy.